So there are many, many different versions of what is significant about our world. The world, you see, is in many ways like a, a blot in a Rorschach test. I presume you are all familiar with the Rorschach test, where you have an ink blot that is made by pouring ink on a piece of paper and then folding it over and then opening it up so that you get a symmetrical pattern. And the person being tested is asked to describe what he sees in the blot. And according to what he describes, the psychologists believe that they can evaluate his personality. Well, actually, the whole world is a Rorschach blot. It's all fundamentally wiggly. Clouds are wiggly, mountains are wiggly, plants and waters, and above all, people. People are peculiarly wiggly. <laughs> and then, uh, what we, the, the task, you see, of, of consciousness is to make sense out of it all. Is to tell a consistent story about the wiggles so that we can keep track of them. And what happens is, in human society, our forefathers, the more persuasive among them, invented a story about the universal Rorschach blot and they pounded their children and made them believe it too. And so now we all accept approximately the same version of the thing. And so by this method of attending to one little bit of the wiggle and then another little bit of the wiggle, we can make sense out of the wiggle. You see, you do it the same way. Supposing instead of a Rorschach blot, you have a piece of territory. You have uh, the Monterey Peninsula. And on the map, it's a wiggle. But if we superimpose over this map a grid, simply uh, lines, north and south, lines of latitude and longitude, and then we describe where each wiggle is in terms of the numbers up or the numbers across of these lines, we can measure the area. Well, that's the basis of calculus. That's the basis of all careful, accurate description of our wiggly world. And so by concentrating on the wiggles, area by area, bit by bit, we learn how to manage it how to make sense out of it. Just in the same way, for example, your mouth has only a certain size and therefore you can't eat a whole chicken at once. In order to be able to absorb a chicken, you have to cut it into pieces. So you get a cut-up fryer. And then even then you have to reduce it to bite-sized units so as to assimilate it. Well, in exactly the same way, the physical world has to be reduced to bite-sized units in order to be assimilated by our intellect. And those bite-sized units we call things and events. There are in nature, in the actual physical universe, no such things as things. And no such happenings as events. They're all invented by us in the same way as we invent lines of latitude and longitude inches, meters, minutes and hours. They're all measures. They don't really exist out there. But we choose certain lines. For example, we choose the boundary of the human skin. And we say this divides me from everything else. Inside this bag of skin is me. Inside those bags of skin is you. And outside that, there's a foreign world that isn't me, that isn't you. But that's not true. The skin, from one point of view, can be said to divide us from the external world. But from another point of view, it is exactly what joins us to the external world. The skin is full of pores through which we breathe the air. The skin is full of nerve ends through which we become sensitive to what goes on around us. 
And if, as a matter of fact, the air pressure outside the skin was not exactly 15 pounds per square inch, if it was anything less than that, we'd blow up. Pressure inside would be too much for the outside. See, what we don't, what we, we are carefully educated not to notice certain things. Because once you start noticing, in other words, using your spotlight to concentrate on certain areas, at the same time as you notice, you also ignore. You also don't notice. Often I take a blackboard and I draw a circle on it. And I say to people, what have I drawn? And they'll say, a circle, a ball, a sphere. Very few people ever say, a hole in the wall. A few smart ones do. In other words, do you notice what's inside the circle, or do you notice what's outside? Because what's outside is just as important as what's inside. You know, the fundamental secret of life, I'm going to tell you this, and this is worth all your prices of admission, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the out, ultimate secret. The ultimate secret is, for every inside, there is an outside. <laughs> and they go together, and you can't have one without the other. And that's the whole problem of metaphysics, of religion, of life and death. So, be of good cheer. Ha, 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 ha.